Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Sheila. If you are new and if you are not new and you're returning, hello, welcome back. I'm so happy you decided to hang out with me. So if you are new and you like planning, bookish content, reading vlogs, and productivity videos, you're in the right place. Make sure to subscribe for more of those types of videos and stay a while. I'd love to have you here and join our little community. Today, as you can tell by the title of this video, I needed to get a new planner. If you also know me, I am a woman of experimentation and exploration and I have no problem trying things out and realizing if it doesn't work to try something else. So I decided that my daily planning system was not working for me um, because currently I am using a weekly planner, a weekly spread for my weekly planning, but also like my daily to-do list and quickly found out that that, was, that that was not working for me. Last year, I used the simplified daily planner, which I really loved. And I guess I got really used to having like a daily planner on top of my weekly planner because I really like having that in front of me every day and kind of jotting down all of my different to-dos for like work and also personal life and all of that. And I was trying to replicate that just in one planner, like one bound planner and realized that I don't have enough space for that. And it was kind of making me feel lost and just kind of like all over the place in terms of like productivity. So to kind of combat that this past week, I've been trying to use planning pads so I have two different like daily planning pads. I have this Cultivate What Matters pad that has like um, to do's on the side and then like a whole section to put like your time schedule in there. And then I have this other daily planner from Cloth and Paper, which is basically a similar layout, but just like a little bit different. So I was using these and the one thing I do not like about notepads that I learned is that I don't like how I have to basically rip it off and discard it when I finish the day. It feels wasteful and I also want to preserve my daily to-do list which I think is also why I loved having like a planner like where all of my daily to-do list daily spreads lived and were housed there. So I'm an archivist that is what I do my profession and our job is to preserve the past so I work with records and preserving records and just maintaining them so they stand the test of time. And I'm a firm believer that our own, we have our own personal archives, our own diaries, planners, journals, all of that is worth preserving because it tells the story of our life. But that's one other reason why I wanted to have like a bound daily to-do list so it's easier for me to preserve my daily pages. So you could argue that I could just put these in a folder or a binder or something, which I could, but for me, that means more time because I have to like file them and organize them versus just having them already in a planner. It's done for me and I don't have to think about that and I could just shove it on a shelf. It's in order. And if I ever want to look at it in the, in the future, I can do that. That's the long winded reason why I wanted to get a new planner for like my daily to do's because I just, didn't feel like I had a good system st to kick off this year with. And I mean, I only did it for a week and realized I need to like change something and fix this because it was not working. So we went to Staples, we purchased a new planner and I ended up getting this 2021 weekly, monthly day designer planner. So I know that day designer has like their flagship daily planners that are like bigger, way bigger, hardcover, very similar to the simplified planner, but I also know they make more affordable versions and sell at like Target or Staples or whatnot. So this is kind of the lower end version. This was $20. I just want to go over some reasons as well why I decided to pick this planner. So one thing that I wanted to have was a smaller planner that was light because my simplified planner was hardcover and it was heavy. And I take that, I like to take my planner with me places because I don't just work from home, I commute and work in an office. So I wanna be able to take it with me to work and it not be incredibly heavy. And the simplified planner was really heavy. So I wanted to get something that was lighter, soft cover and smaller. To give you an idea, this is eight by 10 and this is a little bit smaller than that. It's also plastic. So this will be like very resistant to spills and dirty surfaces. So I think this like plastic vinyl 
cover will be very good to keep it looking tidy and just wipe it clean. This is just the initial intro to why I wanted to get this planner and now we can dive into what it looks like on the inside and go from there. Alright friends, this is our day designer weekly monthly planner from Staples and I just want to go through this and show you all of what it contains and how I plan to use it. So when we open it up, we have a little cover here and you get this snap in bookmark, but it's also a ruler, which is really nice if you need to measure things. That does happen to me sometimes where I need to measure things. We have some stickers that are like gold. There's two packs of stickers here. I didn't even realize that. Definitely we'll use all of these and gold's a nice color. Then we have the folder pocket right here, which is nice especially for me because I always have these sheets of paper and it'll fit like this is my like little daily to-do pad that I have that will fit in there perfectly. And then we have personal information where you can put your name and how to contact you if somehow your planner is lost. And then we have the perpetual calendars here for this year, 2021, and next year, 2022. And then I guess this goes into the whole story of Day Designer, if you don't know about the company or whatnot. Um, and then actually, the beginning pages have a few sections on like goal setting, and I am not going to really use these because I use the I use power sheets for my goal planner. But I think this is you know definitely nice for people that need this. So we have start with a big picture where this is where you can put your goals and there's an accomplish by section over here which is really nice. On the next page we have design your days. I actually think I'm probably going to use this because I like having my morning routine laid out, my evening routine, especially if I, you know, have like an off week or something and I just really want to reset and get back on track having kind of like my ideal routines mapped out already like written in my planner will definitely help me like remember what I need to do and get me motivated and all of that. This section is called stay on course which is where you can review your goals throughout the year so I guess it's kind of like a checkpoint type thing. And then we move into the actual planning pages. So this gives you, this gave you three months in 2020 so we can skip these because clearly it is not 2020 anymore. Goodbye. <laughs> and then we run into the January monthly calendar spread. And what I what I particularly love about this planner and why I wanted to get this planner is because it has so many lines. Like it has lines on the calendar pages and it has lines on the weekly pages. And I just, I don't know. I definitely am a creative person that likes to just scribble but I like having lines because it gets me it, I can look at it and be like okay I can fit five things on here so I can kind of like minimize my to-dos. There's also a notes and to-do section over here which I really like. This is something that I definitely will I like to use like a running like monthly to-do list. They're just random things that I know I need to get done this month like my car inspections do or I need to send my rent out or you know little things like that that I don't have to do on a specific day but I know they definitely need to get done before the month is over and then I can kind of look at this and just tick them off as I go. So I really like that about this page. There's also space up here and definitely enough ample space to kind of write you know, if I have like monthly goals or like focus or just like intentions, I like to put intentions for the month up there. So I really like this monthly spread and I think I'll definitely use it a lot. The other thing I don't like about my weekly planner is that all the months are like in the beginning and then, so like when it's like July and I want to look at my monthly calendar, I have to like go all the way back to the beginning and I do not like that at all. So with the day designer, they're right, they're always right there and they have the monthly tabs over here, which is really nice. So, you know, when it's January, I can just flip back to January. When it's May, I can flip, you know, between my weekly and monthly view and have to go all the way back to the front. All right, so let's go into what the weekly, the actual like meat of this planner is, which is what I'm most excited about. So I, toyed, I thought I had to choose between if I wanted a, a straight up daily planner where it's like each page is dedicated to a day or if I wanted to kind of go with the week at a glance. And I decided on the week at a glance, one, because there wasn't a lot of options for the daily, like they had 
like they were like all hardcover and I don't want a hardcover and then I just realized that this is I think will work better for me you know because the there are a lot of lines here so I think there's like eight eight spots in each day for your to-do list and that is one thing that I really need because I like to break my to-do list every day into like a work to-do list and then like a personal to-do list and I'll show you this when I plan out my day. I tried doing that here which you can see I put all of my like personal to-dos on this side and then like my work to-dos on this side and it just was not working because of the layout and then you can see there's no lines so like there's just so much space here that my brain was like ah and I had to like make my own check boxes and it got really cluttered and then I wasn't able to kind of fit things in there. So with this, I definitely have enough space to put like if I follow the three priorities a day for each category of my life, so like th top three personal to-dos I want to get done, top three YouTube things, top three day job things, I have enough room to put them here because I have like eight spaces with check boxes. And then I have all this space over here as well to write appointments or just little notes. So I just don't have enough space in this planner to do all of that on a daily basis, like to put my work to do's, to put my personal to do's, to put my intention and to put appointments in like my YouTube video <laughs> schedule. And like, there's just not enough space on here, which makes sense because it's crammed all into one page. And then on this page is all like, a to-do list and just like notes, which I love this section. Like this is why I'm going to continue using this weekly planner because I love having the notes section here where I can put like my focus for the week and then the goals I'm working on, like my weekly goals that correspond with my power sheets and my tending list, habits that I'm maintaining, and then my like running to-do list for the week, which obviously you don't get in this planner because they've spread it out. I mean, you get a top three up here. I, I think I'll like doing this more of like focus, like my top three goals would be like finish this book or get a YouTube video up. But in terms of like a running to-do list, because my brain works better of having like just a long to-do list, again, kind of like the monthly view where it's like everything I know I need to get done this week, but I don't necessarily need to do it like on specific days. They just need to get done by Sunday, right? So then I, have that in this planner, which is why I'm going to continue using this. This is something I'm going to use to plan out my week. Like on Sundays, I'm going to sit down with this planner, map out, you know, my goals and habits, my running to-do list, and then put any like appointments or like my work schedule over here. So I can kind of be like, all right, this is what's going on this week. I know what I'm doing. And then I'm only going to really reference this throughout the week. It's not going to be a daily thing. Not going to be putting daily to do's in this planner at all. I'll be using this planner on the daily, taking this to work with me, having it at my desk, checking in every day and writing a to-do list and all of that. So we have a to-do list over here. We have all the space over here. I'm really excited to dive in and using all of this space. And I even have a lot of space on my weekends. So that's something that I really need as well. Um, a lot of planners, they like try to save space by doubling up on the weekend, like Saturday and Sunday. And I think that's really like, it's good as well because it makes you put less on your weekend to do list. But for me, I do like a lot of things on Sunday. Like I meal prep, I do laundry, I go to the grocery store. Like there are things that I do on the weekend, like this is my weekend to-do list to give you an idea of what I've been doing this weekend. I always have like a running to-do list again, just for the weekend, because there are just random things in my head that I want to do. And if I don't write them down or like structure, structure like it in some way, I won't do them. <laughs> so I always have like a running to-do list for the weekend, but I also like having it in my planner because then I can kind of see how much I have going on on a day. So. Those are really the main reasons why I decided to get this planner and now I'm really excited to actually plan for the week ahead with my week at a glance and then the daily to do's in here and yeah so let's like go do that.
So I just finished doing my weekly planning and man oh man, I freaking love this planner. I love it so much. So yeah, let's just briefly go through my thoughts after doing my first weekly spread and all of that. So the one thing that I love the most, which I already kind of shared, is that I can section off my actual to-do list for each day from just extra lines. So like on the left side, I can put my work schedule, I can put my intentions or focus for the day. And on the right side, I can put my to-do list and there's enough lines for me to break down like my like day job to-do list and my personal to-do list. And there's just a lot of room in here for me to write things. There's also room for me to write my daily wins because that's something else that I wanna track is just like wins and accomplishments for the for each day because I want to be able to look back on that. There's also your top three priorities at the top which I really love and I just wrote in kind of my top three goals that are most important because I actually have like seven goals on my in this <laughs> planner. Um, so I was like all right what are the most important ones which is to publish two YouTube channels, keep up with the 30 day breath challenge, and to read Library of the Unwritten which is the current book that I'm reading now and I am also filming a reading vlog for this so if you want to hang out for more bookish content and reading vlogs definitely stick around subscribe hit the notification bell so yeah going back to like sectioning things off I really like on Friday so like Fridays are my like side hustle day I work Monday through Thursday at my day job and then Fridays are like when I work in my my photography business when I can do YouTube stuff and film and all of that. So I like how I was able to put just like my theme for Friday is side hustle day. And then I can put just general like things I know I need to do, but that's just like right now on Sunday, like it's like, okay, I need to film for YouTube. I can put that there. I need to work on my business projects and reply to emails on that day. But when it actually comes to Friday and I sit down and I'm like, all right, what are my to do's that I know I need to get done today? Then I have the space to put them because I don't want to put a bunch of to do's for a day that's like four days in the future because life can change. And I just want to keep these empty until I actually get to that day. I also put in all of my personal to do's, which really is just putting all of my uh, 30 day breath challenge days in there with how long the videos are because I because I want to be able to see like, okay, tomorrow's routine is 20 minutes. So I can probably do that at like 830 or something and then I can get ready for bed. So that gives me an idea of just how much time I have to do the yoga routine and whatever else I can do in the evening after work. I also wanted to put my workouts on here because I'm trying to work consist work out consistently three to four times a week. So I wanted to put in like Monday, I want to do my uh, cardio, like do a cardio routine, get back into that because last week I kind of took the week off from working out because I was on my period. And then I just plugged in the other days that I am doing my workouts like on Thursday, I wanna work out 30 minutes, blah, blah, blah. The other exciting thing is that I have so much more space in the Saturday and Sunday, the weekend sections, which I absolutely love because like I said, I do things on the weekend, like I love to rest, but there are also some things that need to get done specifically on Sundays. Sundays are like my reset day. I need to do like my planning. I need to do laundry, do some cleaning and meal prep and all of that. So I'm able to fit all of my like Sunday reset, call it Sunday reset checklist to do's on there. And that's all there. So when I just open up my planner and it's on Sunday, I know what I need to do. And I wasn't able to fit all of that stuff in this planner because there was just no room. And I ended up just feeling like lost. <laughs> yeah, that is my weekly planning. I'm like, like I said, I love this planner so much. I'm so excited to use this every day and it's so light. Just throw it in my tote bag, take it to work, keep it on my desk when I'm working from home, pull it out and look at it like before I go to bed. There's just, it just feels so portable, so light. And it's also like very pretty to look at. It's aesthetically pleasing, which is nice. Simple, it checks all of my boxes off in terms of things. So we'll see how the first week goes with it. So yeah, please leave a comment down below to let me know what your goal of the week is or what you're focusing on or your intention. I can't wait to cheer you on in the comments. Make sure to give this video a like if you want to see more planning videos and subscribe if you haven't already to join our little community here. So until our next video, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.